parsec. It's a measurement of distance that many people today use to describe distance that is quite far away from us. Now, I've used this in my previous videos, but I never really got to explain what exactly it means. Today, we're going to try to simulate this, and we also are going to try to calculate this. And I'm also going to actually explain to you mathematically what exactly Parsec is, how to calculate it, and also how to measure it. But before we actually talk about all of this, let's try to reach it from Earth. So, this is Earth. The sun is right there. And we're going to try to move away one parsec away from Earth. And we're going to be looking at the distance right here that's increasing right now. Uh, and as soon as this gets to a very large amount of uh, astronomical units, there we go. This is when we actually will be able to simulate one parsec. So we're currently one astronomical unit away. Now we're three, four, five astronomical units away. We're still moving away. We're still not even close to being one parsec away. You see all the other planets flying away from us. I believe this right here was uh, possibly Neptune. Uh, and right about now we're at 100 astronomical units. You can still see the sun. Uh, no, uh, we don't really see Earth anymore. And we're now at 400 astronomical units. The sun is a lot smaller than it used to be. Let's go a little bit faster. And let's go to a distance of about one light year. So one light year is going to, this is one tenth of a light year. And we're about to hit one light year away. The sun is almost a tiny speck. There's a star very close to us right there. We're now at almost two light years, almost three light years. And this right here is one parsec away from Earth. That you can barely see the sun and you can definitely not see the earth anymore, but this is how far away this distance is. So let's talk a little bit about it and let's actually describe it mathematically. Welcome to What the Math. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Parsec and uh, talk a little bit about what it all means, how it relates to astronomy and space sciences, and uh, how to actually find it as well. So let's start with something that you may be familiar with. Let's just talk about a circle. So a circle can be divided into 360 parts. So if you were to divide a circle, and this is how we usually do it, we can divide this into 360 parts and we call each of these parts a degree. So there are 360 degrees in, in a circle. So you can keep dividing this until you get 360 degrees. Now, here's the thing. This is a, this is not very precise because obviously this only gives us about 360 parts uh, for a circle. But what if you want to be a little bit more precise? So what if we actually go in here and now zoom in on this part and what you'll see is you'll see kind of like an angle that looks kind of like this. And this can be further subdivided into something called minutes. And every angle has 60 minutes. So there's actually 60 minutes inside each angle of a circle. And we call these arc minutes. So this is actually something that we call arc minute. And uh, you may have heard this if you've ever used a, a gun or if you know someone who uses guns. This is how we measure accuracy of a gun. In, in, um, in any gun, and he has a really badly drawn gun, the accuracy uh, of the bullet is measured in something called MOA. So how the bullet flies is measured in, uh, and here's a bunch of bullets flying. This spread is measured in MOA. And MOA stands for minute of arc. So the less MOA a gun has, the more accurate it is. And this is because when it comes to longer distances, you cannot just use degrees, you have to use minutes. And this of course refers to the little part inside each degree. So each degree will have 60 minutes. Now that's not it, there's actually more. So here we have a degree which then turns into a minute and then this will turn into something called second. And in every minute, there is 60 seconds. So this will have 60 seconds and this will have 60 minutes. And this right here we refer to as an arc second. So a second of arc. And arc second for a circle is the most precise way of measuring things. And here, just to give you a comparison, if I were to put a little coin, let's just say a dime, if I were to put a dime 
right here just sort of like place it right here and then walk away from it for approximately four kilometers or 2.5 miles and if i were to just stand right here and look at it uh this is this would actually form this right here would form one arc second this little angle right here would be one arc second. So it's a very precise way of measuring uh, really small angles over distances. And this of course is used in in space sciences, but it's also used in things like cartography or map making. When, we, when you actually make maps and when you try to work with really long distances, you have to use arc seconds. But this, of course, doesn't explain what parsec actually means. The word parsec has sec in it, which stands for second, but there's also the word par, or the three letters P-A-R, which stands for parallax. And the idea of parallax is this. So here, I'm gonna try to demonstrate parallax. So you've probably seen this in real life. Um, if you're, especially if you're in a car or something, let's just say you're looking at an object, uh, and the object here is going to be a really awesome lightsaber that you just saw in a store and you want to buy this because Star Wars is about to come out and you really, really want this lightsaber and you're looking at it from this angle here. So here is our lightsaber. We're going to draw how we're looking at it and uh, you keep walking away from it uh, or actually not from it, but beside it, you're walking uh, this way. So you keep walking and walking and walking and then you look at it again. You look at it the second time and you really, really want to buy this lightsaber. So you keep, keep looking at it, and so now you're actually looking at it from a different angle, and it looks a little bit different. And what you see in the back is also a little bit different. You can actually see there's actually kind of like an angle forming here. And this angle right here is what we actually refer to as angle of parallax. Now, in astronomy, we actually do this. We actually divide this in half and only look at the, the half of this angle. So we're only looking at this part. And this is what we're going to be using today to try to figure out how parsecs work and how we actually find distances in space. And you can actually do this yourself as well if you have a telescope and do this relatively accurately as well. So let's use a more specific example here and we're going to be using our solar system. So the way we measure distances and the way this whole parsec and parallax business works is we have our sun right here and then we have earth right next to it orbiting around it. Now here's earth in orbit. It takes one year to orbit around the sun and every half a year earth is either here or here. So there's actually two points where earth is um, every half a year. And we actually know this distance. This is actually referred to as one astronomical unit or approximately 150 million kilometers. So this is one AU. Now, let's just say there's a really, really bright star somewhere in the distance. This is, let's just say it's Sirius or something and it's really, really bright, but we want to know what, how far away is this? So what we do is we look at this star, let's just say in January right here, we're going to look at it and this is not exactly straight. Here we go. This is a little bit more straight. So we'll look at it in January. Now we're going to wait six months and look at it again in, I guess it's June, June, July. I think it's June. Look at it again. And we, what we're going to do is we're going to measure this angle. So we're basically are going to divide this and the sun is going to be our middle. And then we're going to measure this angle right here. Now, this is something that you can do if you have a powerful enough telescope and you can try to estimate what this angle is. Now, normally this is measured in something called milli um, arc second or one one thousandth of an arc second. So this is one thousandth part of one arc second. And this is, of course, because things are a little bit more far away from us than we actually want them to be. And because even arc second is unfortunately not enough for us to, to measure these distances precisely. So here, let's just say that we found this angle and we're going to call this angle A. So this is our angle A. And so here comes a little bit of mathematics. We're now going to make a right triangle here or a triangle with 90 degree angle. Now, this is geometry uh, grade nine, I think, where we you, you may have studied or you may have not studied yet something called trigonometry. Trigonometry is the three buttons on a calculator called sine cosine and tangent. Now, these are, they're scary looking words, but what they refer to is, they refer to uh, a division of two of these sides. Like for example, I just say this is going to be our side 
1, this is our side 2, and this is our side 3. If I were to divide side 2 and side 1, so 2 divided by 1, uh, because I'm dividing these smaller sides, I'm going to get something called tangent of the opposite angle, tangent A. If I divide uh, 2 and 3, if I divide 2 and 3, sine of A, and if I divide 1 and 3, I'm going to get something called cosine of um, A. Now these three things are, they're easily available to you on calculators, there's also tables, these uh, ratios, they have been pre-calculated for many, many, many years, so we actually know them. And if you actually find this angle, if you, if you find A, since we already know the distance too, we actually know that this is one astronomical unit, the only missing parts for us are this side and this side. Now one we don't really care about because it's it's a distance from the sun to the star we don't really want that we want the distance from earth to uh, the star so we want to find three we actually want to find this side right here and this is actually a, uh, in geometry is also uh, known as hypotenuse of the right triangle so we want to find the hypotenuse by using this right here we want to use a sign of the angle to try to discover this uh, particular distance And so here is where we get to find out what a parsec actually is. So a parsec is this distance, this actual distance, when the angle A equals to one arc second. So it only one arc second. So if I were to make this one arc second, this distance of this star from Earth will give us uh, exactly one par uh, parsec. And here we can try to calculate this manually and then I'll tell you the actual value as well. So just to give you a visual representation again, um, the distance from the sun here is one AU. And this is our going to be our X, a known value. And this here is the angle of one arc second. So here we know that the sine of one arc second equals to one astronomical unit divided by x. Uh, this is how we define a sine of this particular angle. Now this can be rewritten of course, uh, because we know that one degree has 3600 seconds. So we can write this as follows. Sine of one over 3600 equals to one astronomical unit divided by x. And so now all they have to do is we have to try to find out how to find x. We're going to place this here. So we're going to distribute the terms, multiply both sides by x and divide both sides by sine of 1 over 3600 to get x equals to x equals to 1 astronomical unit divided by sine of 1 over 3600, which will give us 1 AU divided by divided by uh, this number right here, zero forward by five zeros, four eight, four eight, one three. Now this is what, what my calculator is telling me. So let's find out uh, how many astronomical units this is. And this comes out to 206,265 uh, astronomical units. In other words, 206,000 times the distance of Earth from the sun. And let's actually rewrite this in terms that you might be familiar with. So let's start with the top part here. One astronomical unit is the distance from Earth to the sun. And for light to reach Earth from the sun, it takes approximately 500 seconds. So this is 500 seconds, uh, which means that this distance will take 103 million seconds to, to reach us or to reach that particular point. Uh, all right, so 103 million seconds can be rewritten as 1,193 days, which is approximately 3.27 years. This is a little bit rough because I did simplify a few things. So it's about this. And this is what one parsec is. It's about 3.2 light years. So in other words, one parsec is really, 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 really far away. And it takes for light to get to that distance uh, over three years. And this is a distance of... 206,000 times the distance of Earth from the Sun. 
And so this is how you can actually try to estimate distance to various uh, stellar objects, various stars, uh, by basically measuring it um, six months apart and trying to see what this particular angle of observation is, then dividing it by two, and knowing that this is one astronomical unit, you would use a sign of this angle that you discover and uh, try to find what the distance to that star is. Now this is actually pretty accurate and this is how we still measure distances to some of the closer stars in our galaxy and it's accurate to a distance of approximately 10,000 light years at least. After this it gets a little bit trickier to calculate distances but up to about 10,000 light years it's actually relatively accurate and can be done using nothing but a home telescope. And today what we do is we use space telescopes to make these precise observations and precise measurements because um, if you don't have any atmospheric influence while measuring these distances, uh, it's a lot easier to calculate them more precisely. So uh, a telescope in space uh, doesn't really get any diffraction, which is of course the change of light direction due to at uh, Earth atmosphere. And uh, because of that, we can measure distances to some of the farther stars in our galaxy and do this relatively quickly and relatively accurately as well and hopefully this was actually clear and now you know how to do it yourself as well anyway thank you so much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did please subscribe and check out some of the other universe unbox 2 and space engine videos in the description and also right here and if you really enjoyed this video don't forget to like and share it with your friends and of course check out some of the other space related videos that i've been posting on my channel thank you so much and game you later guys bye bye